Three, two, we're live, everybody. This is 2OF Entertainment. We're back. Yeah, good day. Yeah. Good day. And because I was in here last week, I decided we were wear a red shirt to celebrate uh, Canada. So let's go with that. No, we did have Thanksgiving. <laughs> now we have Thanksgiving. You guys have it a little bit later in November. And that's uh, true. So we got rid of the first batch of turkeys and hams and stuff. So there you get the leftovers. <clears> Thank <throat> you. We appreciate that. We appreciate that. So <laughs> so today we're very we have a very interesting lady i see on the show and for the fans that don't know and i was joking about this the last 20 minutes if we could have recorded how we to get her to get where she is there would have been great 20 minutes of comedy but we didn't do that so you just have to take our word for it. we enjoyed every moment of her and her husband getting themselves set up because they have yeah, the reverb right. back and forth now she has her mickey mouse headset on so um we have no reverb and it's very cool so i'm excited yeah. to, to see her stuff so it's very cool so I think everybody will oh. enjoy her art. Right. Well, we're going to be talking with uh, Christine Godden today. And yeah. uh, 60 years of art, my gosh. Wow. To produce work for that long a time on a consistent basis. Uh, she's kind of a social activist a little bit. You know, and also her work responds to, uh, I guess, some of the women issues that have been coming up in the world. You know, uh, okay. you know the rights of women and uh, like all kinds of rights. Um, and I guess trying to create things visually, uh, that respond to that, um, it's a tough, if it's tough grind, it's sometimes tough lessons for people to watch. Um, and we're going to have a conversation about, um, you know, tough love, I guess. Oh, <laughs> I like that. That you get at Hilga's House of Pain, by the way. But that's a different Ooh. show. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. So there we go. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's bring Christine in and we'll talk with Christine. Her welcome to the show. Yeah, welcome. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Chris, it's a, you can it, you there's no reverb. Now you can talk and wave and do, and it'll be a great show, not <laughs> okay. to worry. I'm yeah, gonna I'll disappear. Try not, I'll, so, I'll try not can, to swear. Okay. It's okay to swear. It's okay to swear. It's like HBO. We're on YouTube. Nobody cares. You're good. <laughs> so feel free to swear away. Guys, have a great Thank show. I'll see you at the end. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good day to you. Hi. We finally got this thing working that we, uh, yeah, it's walk naughty. around. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? I see that conglomeration behind you. I love seeing a busy studio. I mean, the studio is full. Yeah. As, as, so, we're going to talk a little bit about what you, what you're doing and where you're going. What have you done in the past huh, 60 years? Oh my gosh, that's uh, that's that's a good piece of artwork time uh, for anyone to say they've done work for 60 years. And uh, was it all serious work that you did, or was it just fun in the early stages, or was it more of a <clears throat> thing or uh, at first, uh, I don't know, about 16, 14. When I was a little kid, it started with drawing lessons with mother. And I mean, serious drawing lessons. We had the foreshortening, the shadows, the volume, the perspective of everything that a good drawing teacher teaches. And uh, she would lend me her watercolors. And uh, anyway, Prismacolor pencils were for... Uh, the poorer kids was a fantastic gift and that's how it started yeah. and it went on it became serious if you like uh in my uh mid-teens of 17 18 19 um with uh, the the threat of uh, nuclear bombs um the cold war and a lot of that and um uh also uh the discovery of uh, LSD, which we all experimented with, which led to psychedelic art. Now there was neither a deliberate direction in it, it other than we, we wanted to protest the war. We also wanted native kids to get protection from, and gay kids. Um, 
we would sort of hide in this little group amongst ourselves and uh, keep the presence of a gay kid quiet with us. And likewise, a native kid who was off reserve and things like that. Um, <clears throat> and I painted more or less because I painted. I didn't really think of it. And then uh, in my uh, 20s, um, I became extremely ill. So I only painted in the hospital. And even then, it was more lighthearted, uh, natural. There wasn't any motive in it. And then in my 30s, uh, I was uh, in love with a long relationship uh, who demanded I paint only in realism. And because I didn't know, I, I, I dressed as he told me, I painted as he told me, and I was friends that he approved of. And one day, I think it blew up. And um, I went back to uh, try and study. I was in Montreal at the time, and I, I went to Concordia. I took a BA, and I almost graduated and got sick again. And uh, during that time, though, I began to uh, paint like a grown-up, I guess you could say. And then uh, got sick again, and just uh, everything went to pieces again. And uh, I came to Ottawa, lived alone, and uh, painted um, private things uh, with uh, violence and relationships, violence to women. And I don't show that. And there's a lot of it didn't survive. I don't know why. Anyway, I kept a couple of pieces. Um, and then in my 40s, uh, I, the retina in my eyes tore out. 1999 in October, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the Ottawa Eye Institute, and I still say his name, Bill Britton, the surgeon with laser therapy. And when I say laser, I could paint a description of what I could see because you are not asleep when they operate. I won't give you the gory details. But otherwise, I would have gone blind in both eyes. We had weeks to go. Talk about a deadline. <laughs> and after that, yeah, after that, it was time to get down, get busy, get into it, do it now because you'll never do it again. You only do it once. If That's you don't, good, yeah, good uh, advice for everybody. Though. Yeah. So I intensified like never before. Then a patron bought some of my paintings, which were not that developed. They were kind of tentative. Uh, anatomy wise, I needed a lot of refresher. She bought, I don't know, me 10 paintings or so. Anyways, she paid uh, what at the time was an okay price. And then she says to me, um, uh, you've been talking about uh, going back to school. She says, I'll pay for whatever you want to go for. Wow. She paid my three-year tuition. She paid my gasoline, my expenses, my lunches, extra studio time, extra tuition, any paint I wanted. She paid the shot. Uh, she's here. she's passed away by now, but uh, anyway, yeah, that's, that's the second miracle in the bio. <laughs> so, and I graduated. I stuffed three years into one year, and I I did all three years in one. I was up till two in the morning every night, and I did it. I graduated. I got my certificate, Ottawa School of Art. That's that. Yeah. And I launched myself again, and I had now more tools to go and do it the way with the tools to if you want to do a portrait you know how if you everything it's just there now it's there it's in place oh. unfortunately i'm old <laughs> well that's uh, a good thing and a, and a bad thing i guess i know eh? yeah is at least you you've had a good run long run it's great can you can you just kind of back up a little bit Did, uh, your name is covering right over your face a little bit so I, I know, know eh? you, oh, you can either uh, move the other, or the other direction. Yeah. Uh, okay, or just tip your, there you go. Uh, there you sorry. go. You can see All Excellent. Right. Yeah. Better. Um, no, I, you know, uh, let's just start our first image up here, Stephen, and we'll, uh, we'll okay. get that image started up. There we go. This oh, yeah. Where, yeah. So <laughs> there's a. Okay, so That's many. the girl's name. Yeah. yeah. No. It's a girl's name. Uh, she's 
She's your desire waiting to happen. She's your dream waiting to happen. It's and it's so typical of me. The eyes are always huge. And I figured out that's probably because of my eye operation. <laughs> Isn't it that way? Sometimes we're, we actually paint it's, from within. Things that happen to ourselves, I, they, they appear in the portraits. and the, Yeah, what we do. I have that feeling. I, the yeah. profs, the pro, one prof, she used to actually shout at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, well, there uh, they are. They're big eyes. Yeah, the no, nose is wrong. Uh, the chin's too small. It's all wrong, but it's there. What the hell? <laughs> well, I think I think some of the the best stuff is that way. Like it's spontaneous. It just comes. It doesn't. Uh, I think I think your mind evaluates that. If you had to sit down and do the exact proportions of that face. You would lose the real feeling. You'd lose the feeling yeah. of that piece of work. So it'd be different. Yeah. So so when you're okay, you, you say you're doing you know uh, pieces of work that are uh, responses to women and violence and violence towards women. Um, I mean, we've had a terrible history of you know uh, all kinds of violence. Um, yeah. How does that affect your work? Like. You're, you're, you've got a whole body of work that responds to, I guess, a multitude of different things. Like, uh, what, kind of, yeah. what kind of subject matters are we talking? Are we talking about abortions as well as other things? Or um, I don't go into that aspect of women's rights because that's a very private decision. Right. Uh, it's uh, up to, I would say, between the woman and how her life's if she's facing dire poverty or I don't know, after a rape, who knows what's going through your mind. Um, and uh, a woman's request to have her uh, reproductive uh, tubes, whatever they call it, to have that tied so as to remain infertile. That is a right that is still denied but a man can ask for a vasectomy, but there the argument is that <clears throat> it is reversible. But other than the politics of women's rights, I, I respond to, uh, I guess, the need for women to take their place in order to balance what's wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, we're off balance. The, the, the planet is off balance. There's too much dirt and not enough clean, and there's too much violence and not enough peace. We need balance. And I think that uh, an exhibition I had recently, well, 2018, was A Woman's Dark Dreams, and it was basically different aspects of life as concerns women. I, I am not unsympathetic to men, but I grew up in a family where there were no men. There was like nine women. You know, so well yeah. they didn't they didn't stay home much. They took off a lot. They, they didn't want to be in there getting yelled at and whatnot, and not to mention the fights. So. <laughs> the, uh, they were wise. I, I, I yeah, there should be balance and harmony in a family to start with. <laughs> you can get that, but um, oh no, not in mine. Yeah. So do you think this kind of a role of an artist to have a little bit of a um, a commentary in their work, like somewhere? Or, or should you just always... Oh, I don't know. That's up to the thing. artist. It's up to the artist. Uh, it's up to the artist. Some, uh, some artists uh, have always had a nice, cheerful, happy life. And they paint little teacups and butterflies and whatnot. And that's fine. There's a market for it. It's not my road. I will paint the odd floral because I happen to feel like it. But if I do paint a floral... <laughs> It hasn't been blasted by fire or nothing, you know. It's it's a happy little flower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It depends, um, you know. Yeah. Well, you, you we all kind of develop our own style, and, and I guess subject matter becomes part of that as well. Uh, we we, yeah. we fall into some favorite subjects that we like to to follow um, yeah. and respond to. So, can you yeah. can you tell us a little bit about this piece? We're now moving into some of the uh, kind of abstracted. I guess you're in the oh, yeah. Expressionist painter, I guess, is what you kind of call yourself. I guess uh, you know your work. Eclectic, is, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I, um, I noticed throughout this thing you like a lot of verticals. Verticals are really a. Uh, uh, it's possible. Yeah, I just. I didn't think about that. Yeah, vertical. The sun is, uh, in my eyes. Once again, it's about eyes. Eh? Yeah. But the other thing is, is I, I will do this. I will sit down or sit back or lie down on the grass, whatever, and on a sunny day, uh, look into the sky and then close my eyes and do this again and again. And when you close your eyes, you see flashes of things, color, shapes, zigzags. And I painted that, what was behind my eyelids as the sun shines through my eyelids. Yeah. Um, I'm also here... Uh, thinking about what could it have been like to be blind right. it was a narrow escape we had weeks to go yeah no and i think a lot of artists they they tend to paint well we i guess all artists paint what's in front of them a little bit but painting from within yourself and that's what you're doing like a lot of this not only your feelings but yeah. really sensitive subject matters but also like you said looking through your eyelids and looking at a light and saying well that's that's kind of different, you know. I mean, everybody well, yeah, can do it, but like a lot yeah. of people, they don't paint from memory, and kind of this is kind of like a memory painting because well, you have yeah. to open your, you have to open, Well, you have to open your eyes to paint what you saw with your eyes closed, looking <laughs> into the sun. <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So, and I, yeah. I, 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 I guess I'm kind of a memory painter a bit. I paint from what I mm -hmm. saw. But yeah, and I think me uh, personally, I, I think some of that maybe um, it's it, it helps so your work. I guess is not as stilted. Maybe I think there's always something exciting coming up. There's always a new pushing that envelope. I guess we'll call it. Um, you know, we'll go into this one into here. It's just trying to find different ways of doing things, and uh, I mean, I. When you do a lot of abstracts, there there's people looking for. Oh, is there a face in there somewhere? Is there a, is there? Yeah, they, they tend I do to that. appear all of a sudden. And uh, yeah, how do you start some kind of painting like this? Where where does it start? Like this one? Yeah. Um. um I mean, in your mind, you're thinking about it, but uh, is it, is it color like palette. Did, start with? Oh, oh well, thalos. I'm insane for thalos. <laughs> Thalo and and dioxazine violet, they 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 give me a, a visual thrill and the 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 color. Here, what I did was I took a fat palette knife. Uh, well, it's short, but it's got a fat edge, and I put paint here, put there, and then scrape off, and I scrape the shape out of the paint. Okay. Um. And I gradually develop something that I, I know it's coming. Uh, you have here uh, the eyes and the mouth on her face there. And the eyes are like um, wide open, almost uh, glaring, and, and the mouth is open. And what's you can only really see it live in person would be a few lines of gold paint. And it says no one can hear because... When you're a little kid and you're being beat up, they don't hear you. They don't care. No one can hear you. No, there's nobody listening. Uh, you're a young girl on the run. Nobody's there. Nobody's listening. There's nobody there. And then the woman becomes a sibyl. She's trying to tell you, look, we're in trouble. War is coming. Nobody's listening. Nobody's listening. I know a German artist, a, a woman, I forget, Kate. Don't ask me the last name. I just read a book on her two weeks ago. Uh, she worked with uh, woodcuts and ink and almost never any color. She was in Germany uh, after the First World War. She died at the end of the second. They were still bombing Kate. And she was that kind of a painter. Uh, she <clears throat> floored me. At any rate, this is what it is again. No one can hear. No one's listening. She, yeah. she tried her best to speak out against the war. Nobody was listening. So the whole thing here is a mixture of me and, and and the voices that are saying, please stop. Yeah. And uh, it's it's like in a dream. It's got dream color, eh? Because yeah. basically it's a silent voice. 
yeah. hard to describe a silent voice. Yeah. No, it's, I think these are needed. I think artists should take some of their abilities. I mean, <clears throat> you can live, you, you tend to live one life, which is like this. Um, but other artists, you could live two lives. One where you do the pretty paintings and you make a living selling your work, but then some have that social response side to them as well that they keep privately. They don't publish it. They don't, they don't have that shows. Be, that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like a hidden, it's hidden secret within them, but some, yeah. at some point they need to come out. I think they're, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, speak out about things that are important to you. I think that, uh -huh. and use your skill set. I think that expands you as an artist as well. I think when you, you have that ability to, actually respond to something that was happening around you or to you or uh you can see that there's something wrong if you don't speak out even visually like this as an artist then you're you're wasting time you're wasting you're wasting the energies of so many people that could use that that could help them discover what maybe uh is going on that they're thinking about maybe they don't have the skills <clears throat> to, to respond like this but Again, you love this palette. I mean, you've got a little bit of cerulean yeah. in there too, and that. Or oh yeah. These I love cerulean. It mixes well with stuff. It does. Uh, yeah. The other one I really like uh, is viridian green. Mom used viridian in her uh, when she uh, did a group of seven type paintings uh, in oils. Anyway, uh, this this is part of the woman's dark dreams uh, collection. This is uh, this rep in the the way that exhibit was exhibition was laid out was it starts with love, and it keeps going down and down and this would be the second to last painting in the group, and it's where she is degraded to the lowest she can be, which is prostitution. There were woman stands there between what you can see two vertical lines which could be posts. At the ankle, there's an ankle strap which could indicate she's tied there. There are male figures with their backs to us out walking away. I showed this, I belong to, well, I was volunteer a long time with a French Canadian group for uh, domestic violence and women's uh, problems and that. And I showed it to them first and they right away saw everything in it and understood everything in it. It was like, I had nothing to say. They saw it. So uh, <clears throat> uh, this is uh, one uh, of the collection, uh, so the last these, in the line. Are these on canvas or on board or paper? No, no, no. I, I don't use board. They're, they get heavy. Uh, I, I use boards when I'm doing collages. Like Desiree has uh, four uh, paintings, uh, collage mix, acrylic mix. Desiree, there's a, a graffiti in three acts, which I didn't uh, publish here, which I may add later. She's another story. Desiree is a complete poem. Uh, uh anyway this one here is uh i think on a it is on a canvas it's got a homemade frame around it because it's like half an inch thick cheap 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 canvas it would have sold except the canvas was cheap <laughs> yeah it's it's really hard to make sure that artists that i guess use as good a product as they can and, but unfortunately we're you know you get you well, get to a point money. where you, yeah, it's money and uh we understand that but uh and some things i mean are things to last forever cars don't last forever and you spend a lot of money uh, on the store. so yeah, uh, but in the art world forever. they tend to like oh it's got to last a lifetime so a bit of trivia from uh, art history was uh, what's her dally and his he had cheap canvases apparently oh did he oh that one yeah that's what <laughs> i it's one of those things you read uh i loved i loved it's rare i'll use red but i i love where the red is i love the i don't even remember what kind of red that is you know i wish i did know yeah it'd be a cadmium naphthol naphthol <laughs> anyway whatever it's diluted and mixed there's um i was thinking of that painter that used a lot of red and the blind girl and uh if you look to the left of the face uh, yeah well we the viewers left. Uh, uh, there's a red bird there caught in the aura around her head. Right. Uh, even there, the chin is a bit short. But the, uh, there's a, her 
holy aura around her head, which is a brilliant red. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people who are seriously, deeply religious without trying to stomp anyone else's religion. And there are people like that. They, they sometimes get in the middle of their prayer, a touch, a feeling. Uh, it's hard to describe, but it's like an electric shock that doesn't hurt. Um, something in you just, it's the, the, some, uh, some disciplines refer to it as a Satori. Uh, the Tao call it uh, enlightenment. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, yeah. that's that. That's what it is. It's a, a female who's been almost ascending into heaven. the yeah. The red birds are uh, well. If you like birds of fire, uh, they're birds. The red, the red bird, the cardinal is a, a religious. Uh, uh, has some religious meaning in some schools. Yeah, yeah. So she's she has no hair, and. Uh unnecessary she has no breasts unnecessary okay yeah yeah we don't because hair breasts lip injections and the lash things that that's all garbage the essence here is it's spiritual female okay. well it happens to be female i mean males probably surely have the same religious moments but this is that okay it's female yeah no so the uh, you have like it's almost like a feather texture that's happening in behind them on the right by the right of her head it's just the is that charcoal drawing and mixed or is that no it's just all just with paint yeah just, indigo indigo i know so a you, company you, of acrylics that uh, manufacture indigo in acrylic which is really not apparently not uh, normal uh but it makes a, a better black yeah I, yeah, actually mixing that uh, viridian and um, crimson. That'll make a really black, too. That viridian, you mentioned viridian in our last one, and it's a very acrid green. It's it's a hard green to to paint with, but it's a good mixing green. That's what I've always found. I use it to paint spooky pictures. <laughs> yeah, I got a, yeah. got a yeah. bunch going there, a spooky woods, spooky women, spooky ghosts. I'm yeah. off on that now. Yeah, so so are you a brush painter? You're painting with brushes, or do you use different mediums like sticks and scratching items or spatulas? Do you paint that way as uh, well? If if I'm let's say I'm looking for uh, dotted lines that travel in a curve, well, I kind of uh, make tools. Oh, you make the tools for that? Yeah. Well, I can out of something else, you know, you repurpose. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the traditional collection of pellet knives and uh, any old brushes that are necessary for, for the job. Yeah. So you're mostly an acrylic painter, not an oil painter, just an acrylic. Yeah. Um, I, uh, um, I spent so much money, uh, and uh, maybe behind me you can see tons of jars, pots, and tubes. And that there's a couple of well, I don't know how many, a couple of thousand dollars of acrylic paint sitting there, um, and watercolor, uh, which I've neglected a little, and ink. I love ink of all colors, and I like bamboo pens. Yeah. I use them too. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that. Yes. Ah. Well, I think every that artist is not should, an abstract. Yeah, every artist should paint graveyard at least once in their life. They should have to paint a graveyard. Well, yes. I didn't paint a graveyard as much as I. First of all, it's a real place. I drove every day on that road, Russell Road. There was a beautiful wooded area. It was loaded with bird song, blah blah blah, and I drive by day one. Uh, they have these machines in there and. The place is being wrecked, so on and so on. Then they have these huge fires burning. Everything's been cut, torn, shredded, piled up, whatever. And lo and voila, there was a cemetery in that woods. And that's what I painted. Yeah. It's a Protestant cemetery because there are no angels, no Virgin Marys. 
no cherubs, and no crosses. And the important people have tall markers, and the little Joe Blows have little short st <laughs> tombstones. Yeah. It's quite old. And in one photo, I didn't put it in, but it has a Canadian flag pl planted near one of the stones. Uh, and I saw that it had been put in later as a, it was after November 11. And the branches in the foreground are like hands reaching towards the cemetery. The trees remaining standing belong to the cemetery and the church who owns the cemetery. On the far side of that horizon, there's another portion to that cemetery and it was bulldozed. All the stones are piled up. But end of trees, end of man is a real place and a real event. Yeah. And now today you drive by, there's the cemetery. And in yeah. the distance, there's fire burning and crows flying away in the smoke. Yeah, can't see it too well, but they're there and in the smoke. No, it's it's a it's a very memorable and lyrical story here. I think it's it's a great. It's too much story, not enough paint. <laughs> well, no, I, I mean it's not a stare, but it's 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 a point of saying there's something happened here, and you yeah. question as to what's going on. Why is there that fire? Yeah. Why are these brambles in the foreground? What's that all about? Yeah. I mean, that yeah. doesn't mean there's going to be lots of answers. It just, you need to ask the questions. And yeah. that creates an interesting piece of work. Um, but you're also marking history. You know, when you do pieces of work like this, you are marking yeah. the time and place. Yeah, is, and observe, is, observe to the right. There are three crosses going up a hill in the direction of the smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a Christian... Uh, belief or a story and in, in how uh, Jesus was uh, killed, buried, or hung, whatever. And um, it's I put them there because it's a requiem for trees. Trees and me have uh, an eternal root. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I think, uh, yeah, trees are, are special to an awful lot of artists. Um, they're down to, I think there's artists that'll even name their trees that there are certain special ones that are in their neighborhood and such. Yeah. And you know, we do planting trees. When someone passes away, there's been a request to plant a tree on behalf of that person. So there is yeah. a relationship between man and trees, uh, you know, the believing of life. Uh, but this is very much like uh, a rural cemetery. I mean, every, all across yeah. North America, they can be like this. Yeah. And when you, like you said, when they clear the bush away, all of a sudden they find, oh, there's a cemetery there, which means that <laughs> it was forgotten for a long, long time. Yeah. And these trees do claim back that, that territory and become part of that cemetery again. So it's a nice story. It's nothing, I mean, it's a nice understandable story and maybe one of questioning of our own, uh, what we should be doing maybe, but. I know I, I annually we have a cemetery cleaning where my my father's in and everybody oh. kind of the community comes out and they clean. There's not we don't have to hack and slash like this one, but it's been kept. Uh, and I think it's good to go back regularly and uh, yeah, get a, a tune uh, to this piece again. This was a, a reclaim for corn. Actually, they planted corn there. Oh, did they? Oh, oh yeah, the, the whole. Uh, a huge area was cleared uh, okay. for corn. Uh, yeah. So it had an agricultural uh, deadline. <laughs> That's what it was. Well, based yeah. On. Uh, a lot of multinationals are buying uh, groups of uh, smaller farms, and uh, they mm. they're uh, slashing everything and planting ethanol corn. You see. Yeah. Uh, they make big bucks on that. Yeah. The thin green line. Yeah. Uh, can, you, can you explain a little bit what's going on with this one? This is an extent. It's an interesting painting. Uh, just a tree root. Yeah. A big tree root, which is the big brown line, uh, with the little tendrils going deep into the warm earth, mm -hmm. and inside that earth, you'll see a bit of leaf and a bit of debris and uh, the odd rock. And as you come up 
towards the halfway mark, you'll see a big stone, a thin reddish brown root, then you'll see the thin green line, and then you'll see sunlight. Oh, okay. The thin green line is uh, the arable soil on the earth. And it's being uh, plowed mm -hmm. over and over for shopping malls, whatever, co ugly yeah. condos. So the thin green line is where we stand. That's very true. You're going to cross... Again, another social yeah. commentary on, uh, on, yeah. on what's happening yeah. around us. And I think you, you're creating yeah. visual works that respond to that. And I think it's it's important. I think personally, yeah. I do the same a little bit myself. I, I'm on that edge of understanding with nature and uh, trying to figure yeah. out. I think, do you think some of this, the painting aspect is you trying to understand how things work? Like you've figured out the layers of soil and things. And when you build that well, in your work, you kind of reinforce what is happening out there. And, uh, and I do. I, well, I have done a lot of gardening. So that's one of the things which you see what's under, under the earth. Yeah. You dig in the garden. Well, I, I guess I'm just saying that a lot of times that you, you do paintings to understand things better. Like, like uh, okay. to make things, I you know, to clear, to clarify a thought, to because you're sitting there for a long time, thinking about the piece of work you're actually doing. Mm -hmm. um, your mind is thinking along that same way, not just mixing color and things, but responding to a full page as to how it's going to be laid out and what is the, what is the reason for that piece of work, right? Why are you going to spend that amount of time doing that painting? Becomes important, like. Um, so where do most of your works end up? Uh, in different corners of the house, behind the door, in the basement, <laughs> on racks, uh, stacked in the shed. The ones I like the least wind up in the shed, various sheds. We have a couple of sheds back there. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think lots of artists, they, yeah, artists don't like a lot of their work sometimes. Uh, which is, I think. No, I have some that I really do not like. Period. Uh, yeah. And no matter what, I never will like them. They may be well made, even just don't like them. But yeah. it's also that there's no room. This is a one-bedroom house. It's got a basement and a floor up above there, and uh, the attic. You can't do anything there. It's full of insulation. So yeah. that's about it. There's a garage, but it's full of rats, so we're not going there. Uh, <laughs> the sheds, though, uh, they're rat-free because we put in a device. However, yeah, uh, I'll sell maybe one every 16 months, you know, maybe. Yeah. Well, not, it's, it's not even yeah. regular. Yeah. Well, I think it, it, it comes down to what do people want in their home, I guess, or business or wherever they're going to hang it. And it's really uh, yeah. painting for an audience. I, I've really, I don't advise artists doing that. I think it's more, you paint for yourself first and uh, as best Let's you can. It. And it's a tough living a lot of times, especially when you're not painting the subject matter that people want to see, right, all the time. So. Yeah. Oh, I've seen what they want to see. It's sold at Walmarts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, this one's got lots of energy in this one. I really another know, tree, blue yeah. tree again. So, yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, the real title is Blue Tree Whispers at Night. But it's yeah, I was getting, yeah, that gets long, but I think I still had room to put that on there for you if we had the whole time. Oh, I don't mean it's long to put into text. It's long for people to think of, and they can't be bothered thinking too much, you know. Um, Right, these well, days you, give them, like, you give them lots to think about, then that's the thing. You yeah, give, well, if <clears throat> you can lead the horse to the water, doesn't mean they'll think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is uh, oh, it's an old idea, very old sitting with the tree at night and mm -hmm. just listen, just listen. Yeah, just sit there at night and listen. When the wind makes the branches move, you wouldn't believe the sounds that come out of that thing. Yeah. It's amazing. 
if you put your ear on the trunk, you'll hear even more sound. Of course, you get a few bugs, I suppose. But it's just amazing the sound that comes out of a tree. Ah. I guess you could put a cup against the tree and put your yeah. ear in the cup. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I yeah, just thought, I love it. There's been a few documentaries on trees and yeah. tree whisperers. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's things of the communication. The connection. <laughs> right. The, the, uh, Above the ground, yeah. but also below the ground. Ah, um, yes. There are neural connectors below the ground yes. that connect because in, yeah. in Saskatchewan, they have poplar trees. <clears throat> There's usually the mother tree, and it sends yeah. those shoots to all the other ones. So the mother tree will reforest uh, a, a great area, but um, and you'll see the shoots, <laughs> but, but all the roots yeah. are communicating to each Isn't other. Isn't that nice? Yeah. <laughs> And it's to understand that there is a, yeah. you know, it's not a, it's not a verbal communication, which people expect to hear all the time. So, well, trees don't necessarily speak, but they have, they have a, uh, I guess a, it's a, a liquid, which is moisture, water, and uh, there's kind of a, an electricity of some kind within themselves. I'll yeah. call it electricity for lack of words, but it's. Uh -huh. And they do communicate. It's quite a, it's quite an interesting thing, and a lot of it is through a lot of spores and mushrooms and things like that. That oh are yeah, all sorts of little oh, nodules yeah. that grow along the roots. And there's they, a thing too uh, yeah. about uh, spirituality and trees for certain cultures. Right. Uh, yeah. Part right. of the culture of tree for me, or the whatever, is uh, uh, stories from my grandmother. Uh, I'm fourth generation Métis. Uh, according to government standards, I'm the last of the line. I'm looking at the tree trunk right now, and I wanted to point out to something when I, I give the occasional, when I'm rarely hired to do something by a group. Um, branches on when you paint a tree have to appear like they also grow out behind the tree. So you have to get your x-ray vision, look through the trunk, and make a branch come out from behind the tree, as well as from the front and center of the tree, not just on either side with the pole in the middle. <laughs> That's where you can tell the difference between either a very lazy painter or a rank amateur who doesn't want to learn. I've, I've come up against those. And... Uh, like my mother, I haven't any patience for some, but still, um, I worked really hard to make sure that that tree in this, and it won an award too. Um, uh, the branches appear to come out all around the tree. And if you look, I hope that's the effect you get. Yeah. To me, it looks like I almost have it. Well, you have a very yeah. Emily, it has a very Emily Carr feeling about it. Thank you. That's nice. <laughs> she had a love of trees. Uh, She's amazing, old bat. Yes, she was. <laughs> <laughs> Cantankerous as well, I think. But she'd uh, have been friends with me. Yeah, I'm sure she would. And uh, but I sense that a little bit. There's this the swooshing of the tree branches at the top, where the wind probably is catching more of it at the top of the tree, and it's a little quieter yeah. down on the ground. But my favorite yeah. spot is the bottom right hand corner, where there's that. Beautiful light green that just takes me back in behind. Oh, there. Yeah, that's probably one of my favorite spots. Of you mean there's not enough light in the painting? It's no, I just, there's lots of light. It's just, it feels okay. starry light, like uh, Van Gogh kind of light in behind the tree, which is, uh, well, through the branches. The tree is kind of moving, right? Which is lovely. Yeah, sure. It's just the base at the bottom, there's a calm at the bottom of the tree. And I just, uh -huh. you want to go under there. There's like this uh, there's a cavern that, that takes you back and behind. Uh, I love being able to travel within a painting. And I like, uh -huh. I like a few different things. And this one's got lots of action stuff happening in here. Uh -huh. but, yeah. so, oh, my goodness. Wrong title. I think we can make it through, though. 
Dance like no that's one called, else is looking. No, no, no. Wrong title. Wrong painting wrong for that. Title. That's called. That's, oh, you know what that's called? That's called summer heat. Okay. Uh, I want, you flow me like the shoulders. That I put wrong title on that one. <laughs> I'm well, always afraid that's going to happen. My my proofreading. No, no, never mind. Uh, I'll tell it you does what. Kind of have a dance look about it though too. So. It speaks for itself. Summer heat. You're it in does. the garden and everything is loaded with color and heat. That's it. Yeah. That's all. It's as simple as that. Wavy well, movements with the knife. Okay. Down here, you see, uh, you know, uh, the, the knife went like from side to side quickly. Yeah. I dragged the pa I paint. I put the paint on. Wait a bit. Pull some of it off, you see. Yeah. But it's uh, it's can, called can, summer can, summer yeah. heat. You can see the yeah. you can see the branches of um, leaves hanging down from the top, yeah. and looking through. Yeah, it's like Beautiful. a a no, big uh, dragon plant or something. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a it's a nice vision of things. A lot it's of you know to, these, yeah, these kind of yeah you know, yeah no it's so does this come from your mind? Do you paint outside as well? As well? Um. Well, I used to paint outside young when I was a lot younger. Uh, the heat didn't bother me so much. Um, I paint outside still sometimes, yeah. depending on how dangerous it is. Yeah. I went to one of my favorite places just out of the village here, like 10 minutes over at the swamp. I wasn't there five, 10 minutes, some, and I was badly parked because I could have been blocked. Um, I won't go there, but there's a bunch of people you can't trust. And I thought I didn't like, so I walked back right away. Hmm. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, that is all about hypocrisy. Hmm. What do they do? What do they do behind your back? You see that thing crossing the retreating? There are two figures walking away. You can see that. I can see the one. Yeah, I can see the, the head, one. The shoulders. Out. Yeah. There's two. Yeah, there's one up there's a little two. higher, and then the one down. That's oh, right. Yeah, yeah That's one right. central. Yeah. Again, my most beloved thalos and. Uh, Oh, I love that. And that they're very moody. They're like, very moody uh, colors. Yes, they're very I yeah. love them. I love them. I love them since I was a teenager. <laughs> I've used them a lot in my life. Yeah. But the bar at your back is a uh, it's bad talk behind your back. Oh, okay. Yeah. But that's for people to choose. I leave it like that. Okay. No, you can read a lot of things into what you want to put into As it. you wish, yeah. No, it's it, painted for that. Yeah. No, I gotta... Now, this one's that really... That came... Yeah. Yeah. This that came really to me yeah. in a real dream. I was, hmm. I was... I was... I was... I was having a lot of trouble because I had been on uh, psychiatric medications for a long time. Way too long. Then somebody decided to, uh, it's a series of hardship. Uh, this was uh, in the 19, uh, well, very recently, uh, 2015, thereabouts. Yeah, 2015, about. I was, uh, you could say, withdrawing from what's prescriptions. Uh, and it wasn't my doing. I mean, I was following orders. And I had a horrible time. Hmm. And I'd have these dreams. Uh, this is one of those. Uh, there's a, a skeleton. Uh, her hair should have been in braids, but I did it differently. Her hair's in braids. She's female skeleton with rags, handing uh, a soldier. Uh, uh, in the dream, the soldier's African. His teeth are missing, and he is very, very big and strong. She's giving him a box of sand, and that's time. It reflects time. The box mm. is leaking. So it's, it's, you see scorched earth behind you. You see the little shack where she stands. That's the checkpoint Charlie in war. She in that little guard shack. Okay. As the sand drifts out of the box, you can see sparkles. The fence is separating the blue, which is eternity, and the burnt, burnt earth, scorched earth. Yeah. And there's almost no time left. The freedom fighter may win, may not win. And that's what that is. 
So does does a lot of this just come from I a guess, dream straight or, out of a dream? Straight out of a dream. Okay. Yeah. But dreams are influenced by maybe what we watched the night before, uh, heard on news items. I I I avoid I avoid uh, I avoid. Well, I don't avoid. I just don't have time. I don't yeah. have time to sit there and watch the news. If I right. get the news, it's on the radio when I'm traveling from place to place. That's about all um, the time I have for that. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly in a rush. Uh, <laughs> I'm a nervous wreck. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's why they give me all these pills, because I'm a nervous wreck. And these days, I will be a nervous wreck. You don't like it? Well, stay away from me. What can I say? <laughs> uh, I, I'm also pushing 80 and the reality here is, man, I don't have a lot of time left and I am not going to fart around wasting it. I'm busy. I'm in a hurry. It's got to be done. This well, is a dream that came out of a lifetime of being aware of war right? and what it does to our earth. And every time I've seen pictures of anything about the bloody war, start with the slash and burn around here that's being done and still going on. Well, not because it was painted in 2013 that it stopped. It's still going on everywhere. Big fires. Yeah. Ah, anyway, that there came straight out of that dream and it's based on war and time's running out. The sand is running out. The box leaks. Yeah. And that's that. No, it's a strong piece. Uh, it's a very it's strong, a scary piece. piece. Nobody wants that yeah. in the living room. Yeah, but good news is I can I can give you some hope a little bit. And my mother is ninety five, and she's a painter, and she's still painting. Oh, so wow. you got a, you got a ways to go yet, girl? Okay, well, <laughs> put put your old lady onto this old lady onto Facebook, and we'll 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 exchange a few. Yeah. Dirty jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, she could tell you some stories too, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, <laughs> there she is. Yeah. Now, that the right that title is, yeah, yeah, yeah. This was my friend, it's a big one. They're all big, they're all 20 by 40 or thereabouts or bigger. That yeah. there is the Mardi Gras, the carnivals, the 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 disco lights, the the the, the, the that bump and grind dance that you see in clubs and stuff okay. and the woman is all carnival the legs at the bottom are there's like four legs they're going all different directions and there's arms <laughs> moving around and they're all over the place okay. and it's uh you're at home no clothes on the radio's on full blast and you're doing some rock and roll all by yourself <laughs> and the painting and the makeup and the big 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 earrings you know uh and uh, I love the music of Eric Satie, and uh, the title is Three Pieces in the Shape of a Pear. And this sneaks back into my paintings once in a while, uh, pears. And uh, especially on new drawings, the pear appears often. Yeah. Uh, and it's all about dancing against the fear because the death toll was going up everywhere. Yeah. I so used to clean the house and make the bed in case we were found dead in the house. <laughs> they may find the no, I was I was I was preparing as you could say in a, some old blues singers go uh, make make my dying bed, you know? Yeah. Uh, it was that idea was about yeah, keeping yeah. the house clean in case they find us, you know. Yeah, you know, your mother. Your mother the was COVID, always. Uh, yeah, yeah. My, your mother was always the worried COVID, about uh, had clean underwear on too, just in case, right? Oh yeah. Lord Almighty! They raised us on that. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can see the face at the top for sure. That really gives you focus. We got to go in. Going you can see the Clock. eyes and the mouth. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I misheard. Yeah, no, we're still on this one. Well, right? there's a you can see the teeth there. She's got a big grin. Yeah, she does. Yeah, it's fun. It's a fun painting. It's got a lot of oh, yeah, yeah it's got a lot it of energy, the, energy in this piece. It was to fight back against the fear. Yeah, all that. Uh, I, I developed it for the sake of a friend who said, I see a boat in there. We were on Zoom because again, it was COVID or 
thereabouts. COVID was on and off for a while uh, in Ontario. Mr. Ford was turning the dial on and off. Yeah, it's uh, it's about spirit. Yeah, traveling. If you look up the moon, th there's like three moons. One at the top, or towards the uh, right of the canvas. One is a little further off, and one's on the left, quite yeah. brightly lit. It uh, has, yeah. It's a very celestial feeling, but yeah, that's what it's for. Yeah. yeah, so it's that's got a. That's what it's for. Yeah, no, it has yeah. A very I neat... backlit some of the little round shapes in the bottom, mm -hmm. and Mom painted my as 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 vicious and 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 violent as she was. She she artistically speaking uh, left a mark on me. She left other marks too. I'll tell you, but this <laughs> painting wise, yeah, uh, she once did an abstract which she hated. And it had posts going along the edge of what appeared to be a cliff. And they were far apart in distance. And I take them as far as I can without lousing it up. And when the posts end, there's little dots going away towards the first horizon. And then if you follow the round lumps, there's a going away feeling to the second horizon. Then yeah. you travel over to the left, you get on the boat, you're traveling to the third horizon. And if you travel again to the left, there's a fourth horizon going away up the canvas to the left. Yeah. Then there's another horizon, the last line of purple, and then you're in heaven going up to the moon. Okay. So you're doing that old rule of the Z shape. You know that uh, it's in one of our classes and it's in art history. And so they paint... Uh, across the canvas, down it, and then left to it, like a big Z. Yeah. Well, well I do this, but I do it a lot. <laughs> well, it keeps the eye moving. I guess that was the per. Uh, the is to keep yeah. your eye moving throughout the work, but it. Uh, but it has a, I had a, a. Yeah, it's difficult to put three, four horizons into a painting, and. Uh, well, but in, your, in this context of this, it makes kind of makes sense to be able to do that as you're transferring up to heaven. Yeah. You're going through lots of stages. Those. Yeah. And again, your yeah. favorite colors again. So it's kind of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they keep coming back. Eh? Oh, yeah. yeah. This is, uh, oh, gosh. I don't. Is this a recent work, this one? Very, yeah. This is, uh, gosh, not, not even two years old. Maybe yeah. a year. I don't remember now. I'll have to check back. I don't put the dates on the back. I don't like doing that because then I'm cornered. Um, <laughs> I'll ex I could explain some of that later, but yeah. uh, the female figure represents the the daughter, and up above the the shapeless, hairless creature is the uh, sky, <laughs> earth, a spiritual mother. Excuse me, uh, a little pain there. Mm -hmm. Um, the Sky Mother is reaching down with a, a, a loving expression. And her, the eyes are looking down at her daughter. Daughter's reaching up and they're, they're connecting in midair. And to suggest midair and flight, there's a, a hint of birds on the facing. It would be the right side of the canvas. Yeah. Yeah. I have dyslexia, by the way. How I drive, I don't know, but I have it. Um, uh, yeah. The goose shape, you can see a, a long neck, the head of a bird with the long beak there. Uh, and there's other bird shapes in there when you look. Great. So that suggests flight. And there's light streaking out around the two figures, uh, which again represents... Uh, up in the air, wind. There are leaves being blown in the wind, leafy shapes blowing in the, what could be the wind. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I guess it's uh, uh, reaching up to um, uh, your guardian angel, mm -hmm. I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had to fabricate in self-healing, I had to fabricate a mother that loves me. And uh, you could be seven, you could be 70, 
you if you never had a mother you will need to find one and uh i made one uh it came to me in some kind of hypnosis uh mental health treatment there was a i forget now they they make you close your eyes and do stuff and uh, that's what it was oh, okay and, well, the therapy comes out of there that's are we right. done hey goodbye <laughs> 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 no, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. So we okay. hold on. Your your stuff is beautiful. I actually like it. So it's Thank very you nice. Very much. <laughs> so here's the question that I ask every artist that comes on Paul's show. How much? If somebody wants to buy something, you know, maybe some more than one piece every 16 months, just every eight months. Mm -hmm. But if somebody wants to buy something, how yeah. much are you charging for your work? Well, I all right, I'm not now. It's so much per square inch. Eh? We've been told a dollar per square inch. That was the that was rammed into our heads with every art association group I ever exposed right. with. Don't undercut the others. Oh no! Okay. Oh, so undercut not, them. Not to, Under, just undercut them. I don't like well, those people anyway. Just undercut everybody. Ah uh, well. Anyway, <laughs> I do as I'm told because I need the exposure. So I just shut up and do it. However, right. when I developed the Wix page and I got I attended webinars and stuff, eh? Because I I wasn't schooled and all that. Right. I got a uh, dollar per square inch. Yeah, fine. A certain minimum wage per hour. Right. Um, the time that you spend on that painting. So I would open a book, start date for this painting, no title yet, blah, blah. What kind of paint did I use? There's the recipe book. Then right. there's the timetable. And then when it finishes, the title may change. All right. And I've, yeah, well, when I do it right, that's how I do it. So there's the dollar so, per square. Yeah, so, so, so with all that being said, what's the lowest price painting and then what's the highest price painting? So if someone wants I to buy one of your a, works. I've, I've sold a $500 painting. Okay. With the time limit and all that stuff that Carfac advertises. Okay, fine. Okay. I, I let it go for 50 bucks. Why? Okay. Because two little girls, two little girls were jumping up and down and screaming. Oh. I know how they loved it. And it was about a fairy in the woods. Oh, if you and, go to San oh, Francisco, you can find a bunch of them. But uh, uh, it's okay. So, uh, but but so so. But okay, if someone it's likes your in work, Viridian, right? But okay, but, it can go depends on my whim. But okay. in basic reality, it's a dollar per square inch right. plus a minimum hourly wage. So anywhere oh, from like a eight. little tiny percentage for the material for the prop, right? Okay, so we, we so your paints can go let's say anywhere from like if a hundred Canadian to a thousand Canadian. Would that be a fair window? Uh, the okay, um, across the board, twenty yes. by forty is one thousand two hundred. There you go. Twenty by forty. However, uh, some twenty by forties are painted on really cheap canvas, and I am oh. honest with the buyer. Okay. If it was on this, it would be so much, but because it's on that, it's a lot less. Okay, so twelve hundred Canadian. That's a good, okay, but that's a starting spot. I'm going to be your manager right now. So a thousand to twelve hundred Canadian. Yeah. Now the fun yeah. thing is in America, that's like six seven dollars. So that's fine. I in, know. Eh? In, in in euros, you owe them money, but you charge a lot for shipping. <laughs> so we're good. So that's what oh, that's yeah. the important thing. So yeah, you gotta just play with it a little bit. But I you, my dear, estimate. there you go. But, you are an aft. You were a delight. I loved your art. I loved everything you said. I was laughing my you know what off the whole time during your interview. And I know some of it wasn't funny, but you are hysterical. Love you. I hope you <laughs> oh. live another 70 years and you paint no, until you're 200. Uh, you, I love you. Oh, no. It's gorgeous. Okay. All no. right. 199. Sold well, the good, the no, good no, news. No, no, no. Okay. Look, I'll settle for 110 along with okay, his 110 mom. it is. There you go. 110 it is. And good, so. the good uh, news, the good news is, is that uh, Christine has her show starting at Artists in Canada tomorrow. So she'll be online with a two week show on oh, Artists in Canada. Okay. So we have her image. These will be some of the images from that show. So Thanks. all available, and we'll just yeah. have it. That's yeah, fun. I, I really appreciate this group. Eh? Well, thank you for being. Thank you for entertaining us for an hour. I mean that in the nicest sense. Oh. Your work is gorgeous. Oh. I, every thank like I said, I, anybody who's not looking at your stuff is missing a lot. Yeah, there's a lot well, of information. I put it there. out as much as I can. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you come back on the show every now and then. You put some more stuff out. Would you believe I still have things from uh, when I was 16? Wow. 
There's the only a thing couple I have of them that survived the world. Fire, flooding, right. divorces, you name right. it. Some of it stayed. You're like Not Picasso. Much, anyway. It's all like that. You're like a female it's Picasso. Good. It's good. Well, I don't know about Picasso. He's not my style. Yeah, okay. I like yeah, Rothko. Just well, if he had been a man today, I think I'd have like beat him up. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I like yeah. that. It's great. My dear, but, it was uh, a pleasure. Uh, I love Rothko. Okay. So okay. thank you so yeah. much. Once again, we'll have your links below. Anybody who wants to buy any of our art, feel free or go to CanadianArt.com. Yeah. Um, it's behind Paul. Yeah. Um, I'm in Canada, and okay. he will uh, make sure that you get it. And if you can't figure any of that out, reach us here at the show, and we'll put you in touch with both of them. So there you oh, go. Oh, wow. Have well, a good one, everybody. Yeah, Cheers. you too. Good talking with you. Bye. Yeah.